So as I said, we're going to have a look basically into UKIP's policies and really examine why, well, why they're so bad and why often people don't take UKIP seriously as a party. I remember Sargon has now joined UKIP, as has Count Dankiller, Paul Joseph Watson and Milo Yiannopoulos. So I thought that um, let's get them going good. Let's, let's start off with something they'd be interested in. Uh, talking about policy wise um, if they can actually talk about policy so let's talk about higher education so I came across this blog which is it's a blog all about higher education teaching higher education the problem in higher education so on and so on and basically this is the headline of it so UKIP on higher education today is less nostalgic but still dangerous. Okay, so this is where we're going. So what is UKIP's higher education policy? I previously explored this for a blog, uh, in a blog uh, for this uh, four years ago, based on an assortment of documents from local UKIP branches, speeches, and videos. There has not been uh, much to revisit. Uh, the analysis until now, but with the recent publication of Opening the British Mind. So the report, the report identifies a number of problems which many in higher education may nod along with, including, including those who are not into agreeing with UKIP. Um, it, rally, it rallies, it rails against student debt and raises concern about the financial sub, uh, sustainability of the higher education system. It attacks the bureaucracy of research funding, laments research being prioritised ahead of teaching, and condemns uh, rapacious academic publishers. However, uh, sympathy is not likely to extend to the proposed solutions. The report is less focused on reaching uh, or is less focused on reaching a uh, myth mythical golden past, but its proposals are still concerning. It is important to note that the report is, is not a publication from UKIP itself, but is instead from the UKIP Parliamentary Resource Unit, or RUPL, as the acronym goes. So, registered with company, it registered with Companies House back in 2015. Um, Ruppel has Douglas uh, Carswell as one of its directors and is backed uh, and is backed at his office in Parliament. Despite UKIP's only MP, Douglas Carswell has ambitions uh, has, has an ambiguous status in the party. He is not listed under the key people section of the UKIP website and is uh, and is fourth behind three peers in the UKIP parliamentary selection. So, an early disclaimer is necessary. It is not clear whether, dis whether the discussion paper will still come to underkip, uh, underpin UKIP policy. Uh, it is the preferred approach of one wing of the party or just the views of the author. However, the report is more substantial than anything put together before by UKIP on higher education, so it deserves scrutiny. It covers a much wider range of issues than just uh, undergraduate fees, uh, extending uh, to research funding, academic publishing, freedom of speech, applications and admissions policy, and, of course, Brexit. With 143 references among them, um, uh, HEPI and the IFS, David Waits and Andrew, Andrew McGettin in its uh, in its. Uh, it is an unprecedented effort from UKIP to actually look at the status quo and surprisingly even cite experts before recommending policies. Happily, grammar schools are not mentioned once. So the report underlines that copious citations are no guarantee um, of, uh, of rigorous thinking or consistency. For example, the author, go author goes without irony uh, from emphasising the need to prioritise free speech to, just a few sentences later, telling universities that the discussion needs to move beyond unfounded fears into new opportunities. After the EU referendum, 
At times, the report strays into the worst sort of ivory tower writing from a think tank writer with no real knowledge of higher education. The assertion that universities do not have to compete for students will come as a surprise to higher education recruitment teams and admissions tutors. The author makes various assertions which are, at best, um, con uh, Conceit, uh, con uh, contested, but at worst wrong. It is suggested that the current income uh, contingent funding system has increased student num numbers, yet noted elsewhere that the number of undergraduates fell from 175 million in 2004 to 2005 to 100 uh, to one. Uh, sorry, from 1 million uh, 700, uh, some 1 million and 750,000 million to a hundred uh, to one point two seven million in twenty fourteen to twenty fifteen. So with no analysis what the nine K um fees have meant separately uh for FT and PT numbers. Gaming the uh RFE and commercial publishers profiteering from research publications are characterized as the unprecedented consequences of the over reliance on the public purse for research funding. The assumption that it is the status quo with the bureaucracy and incentives of the um, REF are essential uh, components to, of research funding. Unfortunately, it hasn't given the acronym uh, for what these are, so if someone knows what they are, then that's fine. Uh, please post below. So, in fact, in the early 1980s, the state-funded uh, higher proportion of university research with, uh, with the same onerous account accredit accountability uh, demands, predictably perhaps access agreements and policies on equal and diversity in research funding are cited as evidence of discrimination in favour of minorities rather than attempts to level the playing field. The report perhaps uh, is most uh, sele selective about the facts on the issues of graduates working in non-graduate jobs. The author argues that a growing number of graduates are underemployed, working in jobs that either do not require a degree or do not make use of the skills gained from higher education. This is based on a 2015 report from the Chartered Institute of Personal Development, which is, uh, which is presented as gospel. Other research is not mentioned, such as the UCLA uh, report published in September of 2016, which found that graduate jobs had expanded in line with the increased, uh, with increase in graduate numbers from 2007 to 2012, suggesting over-education has not ballooned. Similarly, the report uh, cites um, uh, Heisha data uh, regularly, but curiously, on this point, the author fails to note that the list... Um, that the latest uh, DLHE survey found that only 71% of respondents were in uh, professional employment six months after graduation, which is up by 64% in 2011 to 2012. Um, so, you know, we've, we've got that there. So, as you can see, already UKIP are fudging the numbers and basically living in fancy land. So, Carswell, uh, it says, belongs to the more internationalist wing of UKIP, the free trade uh, out and into the world selection. So, um, the plurality of thoughtful contributions on international students and collaborations is underwhelming. Uh, there, is, there is nothing uh, on international students apart from an instance that EU students should not be charged the same as other international students post-Brexit. Um, no case is made for, say, advocating uh, taking international students out of the migration numbers or even, rec even recognising uh, of their value. The remedies for overcoming the risks uh, of Brexit are empty, warm words. The UK could stand to gain more, more by expanding research partnerships with non-EU countries than, privilege than privileging those with the EU, which will draw... Uh, which few will draw comfort from. The damage that Brexit will do to staff mobility is not discussed. Perhaps the worst part of the port are the proposals for change. Far from being the right remedies, the cures are worse than the various maladies inflicted. For example, 
Having documented the bureaucracy involved in funding research in university research, the only solution suggested is to cut direct spending on research. No proposals for streamline streamlining are forthcoming. Instead, R and D tax credits should be increased to encourage other sources of funding. I suspect a few uh, frustrated uh, with the time spent uh, with the RF admin think that this is the answer. For a report rightly keen on scoring undesirable and unattainable consequences of policy, it fails to consider any possible negative implications of its own proposals. Its major recommendation uh, is the riskiest. It is to reduce students um, not repaying their loans with the consequences uh, with the, con uh, the consequence of the highest cost to the taxpayer. The report proposes a course by course uh, RBA changes. I've blogged on the problems before uh, of differential fees uh, on this basis before. The author's intention is that universities should uh, expand courses with low RBA changes and slim down or shut down courses with high RBA uh, charges. A clear risk that universities would be strongly incentivized to adjust their uh, student uh, recruitment accordingly to recruit students who are likely to go on to earn more. So the Leo data published so far has just shown how stark and uh, how stark the differences can be. David noted that female Pakistani graduates, um, median graduate salary three years after graduation is an astonishing six hundred and fifty pound less than white males. A university with an average uh, with an average uh, RBA change will be driven towards recruiting white ma white male well off students threatening the wider participation uh, of progress that higher education has made. Uh, the proposal certainly differs to past UKIP proposals. A, um, so no longer are fees a regressive step which ought to be replaced of a student grant system. However, while the overall means are different, the end is still the same. Fewer students in a smaller se sector. Overall, the report is less um, amateurish and more nostalgic than previous UKIP pieces on higher education, but its recommendations are still remain dangerous. So that's um, a going over of basic UKIP policy on higher education. As you can see, they're basically the intent, as has been stated, is you reduce the, se the university sector, which means less students, which means even greater competition than there is now, although people disagree that there is competition for university places, and basically to get rid of courses that don't have a higher earning potential. That would disenfranchise huge numbers uh, of people going to university, and I think people should always be offered every single advantage they can to improve themselves and going to university is one of the way that people can improve themselves and allow them to attain um, higher earning potentials, get better jobs, so on and so on. So my question is this to Sargon is and other shall we say recent UKIP supporters is do you think that it is a good idea um, of what UKIP proposed in this paper. Uh, I'll leave a link to the blog down below so that you can read it yourself and go through it yourself if you want to respond to it. Uh, there is also a link to the publication itself, the opening of the British mind. Um, once again you have a hilarious you know hints at you know f uh, curtailing freedom of speech while at the same time advocating for freedom of speech. Uh, let me just read that part again, because again, remember, Sargon and Co. joined uh, UKIP because it was apparently the only party that was supporting freedom of speech. Uh, where was it? Do, 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 do. Uh, let me find it. Here we are, yes. So the report underlines that copious citations are no guarantee for rigorous thinking or consistency. For example, the author goes, without irony, 
from emphasizing the need to prioritize free speech to just a few sentences later telling universities that discussion needs to move beyond unfounded fears to new opportunities. Uh, so, and that was after the EU referendum. So, it bas so basically that's there seems to be UKIP's mo modus operandi, and this isn't this isn't the first uh, instance I've come into looking at this, and particularly when it comes to the Free Speech Party, um, basically telling people to ignore um, free speech and carry on in an ideological uh, way. So, so much for the Free Speech Party, right guys?